The holy sponge, nails, cross, crowns of thorns, and robe of Jesus Christ from his crucifixion were brought to us to this little church of St. Constantine and Helen in order for us to pray for God's help in our lives. They were brought from the holy monastery of Calavrita of St. Archangel Michael, a male monastery which has been there for at least 700 years. Equal of the Apostles, the Emperor Constantine and his mother Helen. The church called St. Constantine, 306 to 337 AD, the equal of the Apostles, and historians call him the Great. He was the son of Caesar Constantius Chlorus, 305 to 306, who governed the lands of Gaul and Britain. His mother was St. Helen, a Christian of humble birth, at this time, the immense Roman Empire was divided into Western and Eastern halves governed by two independent emperors and their rulers called Caesars. Constantius Chlorus was Caesar in the Western Empire and Constantine was born in 274 AD, possibly at Nish in Serbia. In 294, about the age of 20, when uh, Constantine was 20, Constantius divorced Helen in order to further his political ambition by marrying a woman of noble rank. After he became emperor, Constantine showed his mother great honor and respect, granting her the imperial title Augusta. Constantine, the future ruler of all the whole Roman Empire, was raised to respect Christianity. His father did not persecute Christians in the lands he governed. This was at a time when Christians were persecuted throughout the Roman Empire by the emperors Diocletian, 284 to 305 AD, and his co-ruler Maximin Galerius, 305 to 311 in the east, and the emperor Maximian Hercules, 284 to 305 in the west. After the death of Constantius Chlorus, Constantine's father in 306, Constantine was acclaimed by the army at York as Emperor of Gaul and Britain. The first act of the new emperor was to grant the freedom to practice Christianity in the lands subject to him. The pagan Maximian Galerius in the east and the fierce tyrant Maxentius in the west hated Constantine and they plotted to overthrow and kill him. But Constantine bested them in the series of battles, defeating his opponents with the help of God. He prayed to God to give him a sign which would inspire his army to fight valiantly, and the Lord showed him a radiant sign of the cross in the heavens in the with the inscriptions, In this sign, conquer. After Constantine became the sole ruler of the Western Empire of Rome, he issued the Edict of Milan in 313 AD, which guaranteed religious tolerance for Christians. St. Helen, who was a Christian, may have influenced him in his decision. In 323 AD, when he became the sole ruler of the entire Roman Empire, he extended the provisions of the Edict of Milan to the eastern half of the empire. After 300 years of persecution, Christians could finally practice their faith without fear. Renouncing paganism, the emperor did not let his capital remain in ancient Rome, the former center of the pagan realm. He transferred his capital to the east of the city of Byzantium, which was renamed Constantinople, the city of Constantine. On May 11th, Constantine was deeply convinced that only Christianity could unify the immense Roman Empire with its diverse people. He supported the church in every way, he recalled Christian's confessors from banishment, he built churches, and he showed concern for the clergy. The emperor deeply revered the victory bearing sign of the cross of the Lord and also wanted to find the actual cross upon which our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. And for this purpose, he sent his own mother, the Holy Empress Helen, to Jerusalem, granting her both power and money. Patriarch Macarius of Jerusalem and St. Helen 
began to search and through the will of God the life-creating cross was miraculously discovered in 326 AD. The account of the finding of the cross of the Lord is found under the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, September 14th. The Orthodox Church commemorates the uncovering of the precious cross and the precious nails by the Holy Empress Helen on March 6th. While in Palestine, the Holy Empress did much of benefit for the Church. She ordered that all places connected with the early life of the Lord and all his, his all-pure Mother, our Holy Mother of God, the Virgin Mary, should be freed of all traces of paganism, and she commanded that churches should be built at these places. The Emperor Constantine ordered a magnificent church in order of Christ's resurrection to be built over his tomb. St. Helen gave the life-creating cross to the Patriarch for safekeeping and took part of the cross with her for the Emperor. After distributing generous alms at Jerusalem and feeding the needy, at times she even served them herself, the Holy Empress Helen returned to Constantinople where she died in the year 327 AD. Because of her great services to the Church and her efforts to find the life-creating cross, the Empress Helen is called the equal of the Apostles. Tomorrow, May 21st, is the feast of St. Constantine and Helen. Today, May 20th, was the Vespers for their feast. It is during these Vesper services that we came to venerate the holy relics, the artifacts of our Lord Jesus Christ's crucifixion. His cross, his nails, his robe, the sponge, crown of thorns and other artifacts that were given to the holy monastery of Calavrita in 1450 AD by the emperors of Byzantium. And they have been there ever since. These relics have been brought here today for a visit to this church for the feast of St. Constantine and Helen.